Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm really excited for today's video because our model today is somebody who I have tons of admiration and respect for. She's gorgeous inside and out, and she's insanely talented, and it's somebody whom I'm really grateful to be able to call a good friend. It is the one and only Zavaya. Now on her today, we created this really kind of like edgy, futuristic look that I, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And furthermore, I've partnered up with Sephora for this video again. So every single product I'm using today, you can find in store at Sephora or at Sephora.com. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops from Glow Recipe and applying this on as the first step. So I, I'm kind of new to this whole <laughs> TikTok thing and I've been seeing all this hype around this product. So of course, naturally, I had to go out and get it to try out for myself. It definitely adds that glow and radiance to the skin as we can see here. And I absolutely love that there's niacinamide in it. Once I have this worked into the face and neck, I'm gonna head over to the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream to further moisturize Zavaya's skin. This moisturizer has been such a staple in my makeup kit over the last few years. You've seen me use it on my channel time and time again because I always have a good experience with it. It makes the skin look plump and luscious and makeup always lays beautifully on top of it. Now that we have the skin prepped, I'm gonna apply the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiance Lifting Foundation. And today I'm using the shade 250 Sand. Every time I do Zavaya's makeup it's something um, for when she's gonna be on stage or, or for a music video or just any scenario where there's gonna be a lot of bright bright lights so usually I go a shade or two deeper to not only match her face to her shoulders and the rest of her body but also so that the lights don't wash her out but anyways I'm applying this on with the beauty blender which is the same one I use to apply the moisturizer so that way the moisturizer is being transferred over to the foundation application the same way it'll be transferred on over to the concealer and to the contour application later. I've been using this foundation for a little while now. I love that there's an SPF of 30 in it, and I do like that the, the, the glow it gives to the skin, but with that said, I think it looks best when it's set with powder, which we'll later do after we apply the contour and the highlight. To highlight, I'm using the Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade O2W, which has this light golden undertone to it. And I'm applying this to all the areas of the face I want to brighten and lift. So this includes the under eye area, center of the forehead, keep it bow, chin, and down the center of the nose. Mind you, this is a glam today that is gonna be on the more dramatic and full coverage side. So, so I, I'm not gonna be shy with the highlight and the contour today. I've read some comments from y'all in the last few glams I've done on my channel saying that you're wanting to see something more dramatic and not so, you know, quote unquote, natural looking. So you asked and you shall receive. To contour, I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in the shade of Mocha and applying this to all the areas of the face I want to add warmth and dimension to, such as the perimeter of the forehead, underneath the cheekbones, the jawline, down the sides of the nose, and below the lower lip. And I'll then begin blending everything in with a sponge. I really like these Too Faced concealers for sculpting the face. In fact, I placed, um, I placed an order for a few more of these the other day. Right now, as I speak, the Sephora Spring Savings event is happening. Depending on what tier you're at with their Beauty Insiders program, there are different dates it starts for you. So I'm in the Rouge tier. So I had early access on April 9th, and I believe the VIB tier starts on the 13th, and then the Insiders tier starts on the 15th. But the event for all the tiers ends on the 19th. So <laughs> I say all that to say, Honestly, now is the best time to stock up on your must-haves. I stocked up on quite a few things, such as the Polish Choice 2% BHA Exfoliator, the Too Faced Concealers, as I said, the Armani Luminous Silk Foundations. Um, what else did I get? Oh, some Buxom Lip Glosses, and just a whole bunch of products that I've been wanting to try out. And I saved a bunch of money with the 20% off, so I'm a happy camper. The multi-use code I used is OMG Spring. I'll link it down below, along with a link to sign up for the Sephora Beauty and Insiders program because you have access to different discounts depending on what tier you're at. So if you're not a part of that Beauty Insiders program, sign up ASAP so you can take advantage of the Spring Savings event. Oh, I, I know what else I got. I got the Skin Tints from Fenty Beauty. That's another product I've been seeing everywhere. Have any of y'all tried it out yet? I wonder if it's any good. I bought like six or eight shades to start with, and if I like it, I'll order more, but I'll have to keep you posted on that. We'll see. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling, and once I finish up with this blend, I'll be right back for the next step. Mm. 
Alrighty, so if you're still with me here, we have everything blended and looking seamless. So now it's time to set the makeup using the one size translucent ultimate blurring setting powder. I begin placing this powder to the under eye area to set that concealer into place. And I'll then take this around the rest of the face to set the foundation and the contour. And per usual, I'm using a powder puff to do this. And if you prefer using brushes, go for it, but I, I just prefer using a powder puff because it really allows me to press the powder into the skin. Okay, so now we have the makeup set and it's not gonna go anywhere. So next, I'm taking the Sunstalker Bronzer from Fenty Beauty in the shade Island Ting to further enforce that contour we created. This is just gonna add a little more warmth and structure to the face and it's important that we had set the contour with the one size powder first because if not, there's a risk of bronzer looking muddy when placed right on top of a wet product. So the best tip I can give for a smooth bronzer application is to make sure your liquid or cream foundation is completely dry and set with powder first before going in with bronzer. And once we're done with that, I'm dipping back into our translucent setting powder and gonna bake along the sides of the nose and jawline. I'm bringing this pretty far up on the sides of the nose, right along that contour to really snatch that nose, so to speak. And the same goes for the jawline. By placing this powder and letting it sit for a few minutes, it'll sharpen that cheek contour and make the jawline really pop. Now to start on the brows, I'm using this brow powder duo in the shade Dark Brown from Anastasia Beverly Hills to begin filling in the brows. The trick to this is to use it ever so slightly, and I'm I'm really only using it from the middle of the brow and onwards. She really likes for the front of her brows to be really settled, so we're keeping most of the product on the outer half. Then, with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, I'm running this lightly through the brow hairs, reinforcing the shape we created with the powder. If I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, the pencil shade I'm using right now is soft brown, but I'll check to make sure and I'll link it down below, along with everything else I'm using today, of course. The last brow product I'm using today is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. This is another product I actually picked up during my um, <laughs> my Sephora online shopping haul on Friday. I really like this product. It does exactly what it's supposed to. It freezes the brow hairs into place all day, better than any brow gel I've ever used in the past. The way I apply this is I take it through the brow hairs one direction, then I take it in the opposite direction to really saturate the hairs with it, and then I'll start brushing the hairs up into the place I'm want them to remain. And you can see, if you look at the spoolie there, how it's picking up, you know, not only just some of that brow freeze product, but really the remains of the foundation and the concealer and the powders we've used. So ultimately, we're getting a really polished, really clean looking brow by picking up any of the remains of that product we don't want on the brow hairs. And just for some extra fine tuning and detail work, I've head back to the brow whiz to fill in any sparse areas. Now, to start on the eyes, I'm using the Huda Beauty Amethyst Obsessions Eyeshadow Palette and running that light purple shade from the top right hand corner of the palette into the outer corner of the eye and up into the crease. Also, you may notice I, I placed just a bit of that loose powder underneath the eyes just just in case there's fallout. I mean, all of the shadows we're using today are matte, so there shouldn't be much fallout, if any, but it's just in case. So I'm slowly building this up, taking my time with it, being patient, and trying to get an idea of what direction I'm gonna take with this eye look today. I'm gonna zoom you on in here so you can really see what's happening as I place the deep plum shade from the palette into the crease. Mind you, I still have no idea what direction I'm taking with this look at this point. I, I, I'm just kind of going with it and seeing what happens. It looks a little crazy right now, I know, but have faith. You'll see it start coming together as I begin blending. That's that is one thing I'll say about Zavai that I love. She's always had faith, she's always trusted the process and really encouraged me to do kind of whatever I wanted. And we have created some pretty epic looks together. Um, I love the look we did for her performance at the Teen Choice Awards, her music videos. Oh my gosh, the whole new world music video for Aladdin we did. The eye makeup was out of this world. I'll throw in a clip here, it was just, 
It was glitter galore. You know I was in heaven with this look. It turned out so good. Anyways, I'm trying to include as much of this blending footage as possible, just so you know realistically what you're signing up for if you, if you try recreating this look. It takes a little time and patience, yes, but it'll be well worth it. All right, next, I'm using the Huda Beauty Matte and Metals Liquid Eyeshadow to cut the crease. And although I'm using a brush to do this, you can totally use the applicator wand it already comes with if you're applying it onto yourself. And I'm only bringing this up halfway onto the eyelid and will buff out the edge of that with my finger to begin diffusing it out even more before I head back to my blending brush to go over it. Once I have the edge of that buffed and blended, I'm gonna dip back into the two shades we've used from the Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette and begin smoking out the bottom lash line. I first started with the lighter purple shade before then using the deep plum shade to add some depth to the lash line. Then with the Master Matte's liquid eyeliner from Makeup by Mario, I'm winging out the outer corner of the eye before winging in the inner corner. <laughs> I don't know if that's the proper way of phrasing it, winging in um, or extending the inner corner, I should say. Well, you guys know what I mean. By lengthening both the inner and outer corners, we're going to create an even more lengthened and lifted eye shape. And she's honestly better at doing her own eyeliner than I am, so no lie, I'm holding my breath right now, wanting to get through this. Thankfully, it turned out decent, but the true test is the next step, which is applying the white eyeliner. Oh my goodness gracious, this is happening. Spencer a year ago would never ever had attempted this, but <laughs> nope, it's happening today. So let's talk about the product. I'm using the KVD Super Pomade Vegan Eyeliner in the shade White Out. And basically I'm applying this to random areas of the eye to spice it on up a bit. Now I joke around saying that eyeliner is my worst enemy and all that, but <laughs> there is some truth to that. Listen, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. There are some insane insanely talented makeup artists here on YouTube that could pretty much do this in their sleep and I totally envy them for that because eyeliner is just not my thing. But today, I promised myself that I'd step out of my comfort zone, challenge myself and try something different, whether I like how it turns out or not. Why? One, because I tried something different. Two, I was in great company with our model, Zavaya. And three, I got to share it all with y'all. So <laughs> there's that. Okay, next I'm using the Too Faced Killer Liner in the shade Killer Nude and applying this to the inner waterline to open up the eye and to create some contrast. I'm gonna complete the other eye and mascara off camera and then I'll dip into the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade One Fair to wipe off the baking powder. I know it sounds kind of silly adding one powder powder just to remove another, but it really does make a big difference. I love this pressed powder because it does give the skin that airbrush finish and it has just enough color pigment in it to make the under eyes noticeably brighter. Once I'm done with this, I'm using the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blush in the shade Crush on Cupid, which is this bright, cool toned pink. It can be a little tricky adding creams on top of powders and normally I wouldn't recommend it, but in this case, I first apply this cream to the back of my hand, really work the brush into to it and then buff the color pigment onto the cheeks and as you can see it, it gives the faintest hint of color that looks really subtle but beautiful. Now with this Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Opal, I'm going to dust this onto the high points of her cheekbones, down the center of the nose and the cupid's bow to add some glow back to the skin. Now that we're completely done with the complexion, it's time for the lips, which will be pretty quick and easy today. The first product I'm using is the Laura Mercier Rouge Essential Cream Lipstick, and I'm applying this on with a brush, focusing it on the borders of the lips. The shade I'm using, um, correct me if I'm saying this wrong, it's called Brune Naturel, and although it's a neutral brown tone, it goes on looking more like a mauve when it's sheared out, and more of a brown when it's built up. This is my favorite lipstick shade from the Laura Mercier Rouge Essential line. To add some shine, I'm using the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Glossy Lip Balm in the shade Nearly Neutral. The camera stopped rolling right as I was applying this, which is why you didn't catch the whole application of this gloss, but as you can see, it looks really beautiful and it has the perfect amount of color pigment in it. And lastly, I'm using the Huda Beauty Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist to set the makeup and to lock it into place, which makes this the final step in creating this edgy, futuristic makeup look on the naturally stunning Javaya. Baby, we can do this all night Keep on taking gifts and I love, oh love I don't really care if you don't mind Baby, we can do this all night We can do it all night We can do it all night Baby, won't you hold tight, hold tight, hold tight and There we go
we have it kids. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.